Sulva Rai. I am the Chief People Officer at Renew Bai. Uh, my journey, professional journey started uh, with a company called Big uh, EY, a big four. And uh, I worked there for almost like a decade. And uh, EY has, a, I think, a great ability of creating entrepreneurs. And that bug did fit me and I started my own entrepreneurial journey and started my own HR uh, strategy consulting firm called People Matrix. And then Renew by happened and uh, Renew by used to be my client. And there's a joke here that they pushed me from my own business. So <laughs> it was just an extension of my entrepreneurial journey and I joined them as a uh, you know chief people officer. And it's been a great, fantastic journey. Uh, seeing the organization grow from 50 to 2500 plus. So uh, done a lot of stuff along with uh, the core HR. Uh, so that's been the professional journey. Personally, um, I am a wife of an army officer. I've got two daughters. Uh, my elder one has just cracked us, so she has moved to Bombay. And my younger one is uh, pretty young. She's in class eight. And um, in my free time, uh, I have a lot of interest, actually. So uh, I read a lot. Uh, I do spend time on my physical wellness and mental wellness. Uh, I am also spiritual, so I try to spend some time in that area. So, yeah, I've got multiple interests in life. So that's a little bit about me. Uh, agile methodology uh, predominantly is adapted uh, by uh, the tech people and the way they uh, construct um, their product journeys. Um, I find it very fascinating and I think it can be used uh, in uh, different uh, departments, not just HR. And if I have to specifically talk about it, uh, its implementation in the HR space. So if, if you really understand uh, the essence of Agile, it's basically more around the interaction with the stakeholders, you know, individuals uh, and different stakeholders. So it's it's all about interactions take precedence over the processes and the tools. And it is also about, you know, uh, making the system work rather than just getting into uh, just the documentation and a lot of flow of, uh, you know, verbose documentation. So, uh, and and the third is all about collaboration. So it doesn't mean only uh, in, in in the software. It is only it's not only about just the coders. It is also about the front end, the product. Everything every team comes together uh, for the product to form its shape. And finally, it is the reason it is agile is it's like you are trying to um, keep making changes in the moving vehicle. So that is when agile was form for the software and likewise if i have to talk about its implementation uh, within the hr space uh, it, it it's it's very similar um, if i have to first talk about you know it's it's, it's about interaction so hr is no more uh, uh, no more you know, working in the silos it has to interact with this uh, business more uh, closely because it is not just about only hiring and retaining and performance management, but responding to the needs of the business. Uh, what is the priority? What are the some of the things that we are going to do? What are the areas, uh, demographics we are going to expand? So all that requires, uh, you know, the way you need to prepare your workforce. And hence, a lot of interaction happens. And that's one aspect of Agile that gets uh, implemented by the HR. Um, second is about the simplicity. Uh, the reason why Agile uh, framework is very uh, popular is that it simplifies things. And um, I feel the work of uh, the people team is actually to simplify uh, things and doesn't get bogged down over loads of paperwork. The more simple and easy to understand and easy to adopt, uh, you know, the more effective it is for the people and for the organization. Um, and the third thing is um, about the collaboration. Again, uh, you know, uh, HR is not confined to a particular department, to a particular kind of a process. It has to come together when it includes everyone. 
uh, and uh, the needs and expectation of every department can be understood uh, and can be tailor made in a manner where you know it has the maximum impact and uh, that kind of uh, collaboration uh, does happen in a lot of hr uh, you know either you're thinking of a policy or if you're thinking of an hr structure the way people are uh, you know mapped um, the way the processes need to be run uh, so that's where a lot of collaboration and cross team uh, you know uh, connect happens and and that's again applicable and uh, the fourth thing is all about when i said the agile methodology is all about uh, you know being so flexible that you are able to make change in the moving uh, vehicle right so i think sometimes uh, when the organizations achieve uh, the kind of uh, stage uh, stature in terms of the number of people the growth uh, making uh, large changes sometimes can be challenging uh, but then still you have to respond to the needs of the organization and you have to be flexible uh to be able to implement those things so i think how quickly hr is able to understand the dynamic needs of the business and prioritize those changes quickly um is extremely important so um if i have to give you an example for better understanding um uh, there was uh, for example if we take recruitment there was time uh, during the pandemic where we were facing something like a great resignation so tech people you know uh, were uh, getting multiple offers and it was difficult for the teams to uh, retain the quickly the hr changed its uh, strategy because we were not uh, getting uh, the talent we moved to a, a um, consultant model where we would take uh, professionals from a certain agency and uh, deploy them on the projects uh, for it for the continuity but then considering the viability in terms of the roi you know we quickly changed the gear so because experience people were not uh, available and it, there was war for talent we quickly moved to the uh, hiring of the freshers and and getting them on a long term training model and training them upskilling them with some senior people and then uh, creating the bench strength so as hr has to continuously revolve around the critical needs of the business and be agile about it and that's how i think it all comes together when as hr is able to implement various uh, great aspects of agile way of working in the business um i think uh, you know as i reflect uh, we have been um, using uh, it uh, in our organization without really calling it like a agile uh, naming it like that but i think we have been extremely uh, proactive and uh, there are various processes uh, and practices that we have implemented uh, that really fall under the agile methodology um again this uh, one of the examples could be um uh, we as hr are responsible for collecting feedback uh, from our employees so we all uh, earlier had a you know format of one on one connections then there was also some kind of surveys that would happen but that was tenured so you know once in a year or pulse me you know twice a year so to be able to uh, proactively understand and hear the voice of the people uh, that's when we thought that you know we need to innovate and uh, think differently and that was the time and my workforce is also very distributed it's not that everyone sits in one office uh my people are spread across 150 cities of the country so to be able to connect with all of them uh and to know what's going on how are they feeling uh that's the time when we invested in something called um, ai chatbot uh which uh enable people to connect and freely speak and it is promoted as sulbha's assistant so in a manner they can directly speak with me and share uh, their feedback so uh, i think that has been very very powerful for us um uh, to your question what really motivated us to do that was that we wanted to hear the real time uh, feedback we didn't want to be reactive uh, you know when somebody resigns and then we get into uh, the mode of understanding what happened why did you resign this tool really gives lot of insights if there is um a disengagement or person is not feeling great uh, for whatever reasons they are able to 
uh, freely share and we kind of uh, as hr get the prompt uh, uh, you know uh, much earlier and the hr team is able to connect with the employees and respond to the needs of the people so it's very proactive and it gives the pulse real time uh, and the results have been great i think um, uh, there are several cases where we have been able to proactively retain good performers there we have been able to um, address uh, the concerns and the grievances of the people uh, and obviously all this leads to a, a great employee experience um, so that has helped um, if I have to give you one more example, um, it would be about implementing cross-functional teams. So we always uh, obviously have the departmental teams that have been working, but uh, we realize to respond to the dynamic needs of the business uh, because whenever a product is created, uh, it can't be created in isolation only by a department. There is a user department, there are other departments feeding information uh, to the product and ultimately it's a launch and finally the uh, adaptability uh, through the sales team. So uh, we identified the key uh, priorities of the organizations and we wanted the best of best people coming together and working on those priorities. So we created uh, a pod system where people from different departments would come together and own a priority and give their inputs. So be marketing, be product, be tech, be HR, uh, we sales, all of them coming together, forming the pods for, you know, a particular priority. And then they were being measured on the achievement of those priorities. And it, it was the kind of action that needs to be taken and, you know, measured. So Agile is also about the measurement uh, of the efforts and the outcome. So we were closely following that as well. So these are some of the things. And the result of this, again, has been that the organization priorities, uh, got picked up, uh, got addressed, and uh, you know a timely uh, launch of new products, implementation, etc. could happen. So these are some of the examples that I can share with you. Within my own HR team. Um, I don't think so. I really faced any challenges, to be very frank. Um, but um, in general, I think whenever there is a change, there is a resistance. Uh, so sometimes uh, that uh, does come in some shape or form uh, in, in the organization um, because people are used to doing things in a certain manner. Uh, like when I was giving you an example of uh, creating the cross-functional pod structures, you know, people coming together, there was an initial resistance. But I think the way we were articulate about the need, uh, uh, the things to be done and the outcome to be achieved, uh, people soon realized that uh, until and unless everyone collaborates, it will be very difficult for one team to deliver. And uh, so that initial resistance, uh, we were able to uh, overcome and... Uh, it was by sheer, you know, uh, communication, uh, keeping in flow, addressing uh, any concerns that people would have. So that's, uh, you know, one thing that as a resistance, um, you know, does come into play. The another challenge that um, comes is um, maintaining the rhythm uh, because um, agile methodology also is also about continuously monitoring the progress. And um, then to be able to ensure that there is consistency uh, in terms of delivery of outcomes, that happens. Um, uh, few teams did a good job, few teams then you need to kind of uh, support them more. And sometimes that could be a challenge of in terms of monitoring the progress, uh, measuring the outcomes. Uh, but again, uh, that can be easily... Uh, handled by uh, laying down clear KPIs, uh, clear expectations, uh, and then reviewing them uh, on, a, on, a, on a more frequent uh, manner. Um, and that kind of helps uh, drive the, and maintains the pace uh, of the projects. And another challenge could only, I mean, that I can think about is, could be about, um, um, 
measurement I spoke is also about the accountability uh, because um, it, it is it is to be done in collaboration. It is not just about one person's job. Uh, and there are too many interdependencies uh, that gets created. So uh, again, this um, challenge is addressed by ensuring more uh, you know, collaboration between the team, more frequent communication uh, within the team and owning it as, um, as a unit and not as this is my department or this is your department, this should have been done by you. So creating that shared responsibility um, was something uh, that we were able to do to be able to drive uh, that accountability. So I think those were some of the challenges and that's how we tried to address them. I think first uh, understand uh, why there is a need. Um, that's uh, until unless you know the why of it, uh, the what and how will become difficult. So get more clarity on, around why you want to do certain things. And once you have understood that, I think it is um, all about engagement and communication with the stakeholders. So my, my strong advice is as HR, the more uh, information or the more, more uh, knowledge you have about the business and its needs, um, you will have a lot of quality conversation with your stakeholders and um, proactively engaging with the business to understand not only the current challenges of the business, but also the aspiration of the business. Because it is not about doing the firefighting for the moment. It is all about preparing the organization for the future. So, you know, engaging the uh, stakeholders um, for, for a future where you want to prepare your organization now. Uh, and Agile is all about, you know, how do you not only address today's issues, but how are you preparing for the future? So I think that kind of uh, communication uh, is extremely important because then you will get a buy-in and then, you know, there is an alignment of uh, goals. So that is something that is important. Um, the third could be, you know, being... Um, uh, more collaborative and more flexible. Um, and what I mean by this is, uh, you know, flexible to the opinions of the others, uh, flexible to the needs uh, of different stakeholders, um, and and being more, uh, you know, uh, collaborative in terms of even if if there is there is a difference of opinion, how do we work together, keeping the organization at the center of the focus, and uh, uh, thinking of uh, you know, uh, initiatives in the processes, uh, you know, that works the best for the organization. I think that is, again, an important uh, role where HR leaders play, um, keeping everything aside and keeping the interest of the organization in the center of the focus. Um, and um, yes, I think uh, continuous, uh, whatever new that, uh, you know, as HR leaders, we try to implement, it's important that we continuously um, measure and track uh, whether it's working or not. Is it effective or not? Uh, is it giving us the required uh, results or the outputs or not? So I think keep measuring the progress and the impact. Um, that's important. And uh, finally, I think it's all about, uh, because it is it is for the HR leaders, it's all about how um, it's going to impact the people experience, you know. At the end of the day, it, the business is uh, built by the people and it's important that the people feel excited about the changes. People feel uh, secure. People feel part of, uh, you know, something that is greater happening in the organization. So again, uh, keep people at the center of the focus uh, when the changes are happening because uh, again, how are they impacted is something that uh, is the prime responsibility of the HR leaders to, you know, take care that while you are obviously looking after all the interest and the uh, impacts that is required to be done for the business, but how it is con uh, also continuously uh, working in the favor of the employees also, because if, if employees are engaged, understand it, um, they will be you know excited to deliver uh, the expected result. Otherwise, uh, this communication gap can lead to a lot of uh, misunderstanding, frustration, and uh, you know, a sense of, uh, you know, disconnect. 
So uh, HR leaders should definitely keep the employees at the center of the focus uh, and their experiences when they're thinking about any new change. We do use uh, multiple tools um, and uh, there are specific areas where we have uh, deployed technology uh, to not only make um, our work easy, but also to help us get better engagement and outcome from the people. Uh, first come first being uh, talent acquisition and the recruitment, the way we do it. So um, it's important for us to uh, source the right candidates at a speed uh, and uh, with the maximum fitment uh, criteria. So apart from, you know, uh, the regular uh, LinkedIn talent solutions. Um, we also have our ATS. Um, we use uh, Talent Recruit, um, which also has a feature of, again, um, because we do a lot of hiring for the field sales. And um, that requires reaching out to thousands of people uh, and then doing that initial screening, etc. So we try to use their AI bot kind of thing, which is able to uh, screen the CVs and also do an initial um, you know, screening for us so that is something that we're doing that helps us speed in up the screening process uh, so that's been implemented uh, that's one space in terms of um, monitoring productivity um, uh, again like I mentioned that we have a large sales force so we have created an in-house tool uh, we call it RV Sati, which is um, nothing but an activity tracking uh, tool uh, for a field force uh, where um, our uh, Salesforce team are, are required to kind of, uh, you know, mention the meetings that they're having, the kind of discussions they're having and stuff like that. So that's something that we do. Uh, for um, the um, tech product team, uh, also we have uh, things like Jira, Figma, Slack. All these tools are used uh, for uh, product management and uh, delivery of the tech. So these are some of the tools that uh, we use uh, for productivity. Um, for employee experience, uh, engagement and, and the feedback that I just mentioned, we use a AI chatbot called Amara. Uh, again, that's a fantastic tool to connect with the people and get the real-time feedback. So that's something that we have been using. Um, one more area where we use technology in that sense is employee wellness and well-being. Uh, we have collaborated with uh, Round Glass Living. Uh, again, that's uh, a fantastic uh, platform where employees have access to physical, mental wellness uh, initiatives. Um, uh, and it, it covers length and breadth of uh, things uh, around employee wellness. So that's, that's being provided uh, to our people. And finally, uh, we also use um, tools like, uh, for us, you know, uh, data helps take right decisions. So um, uh, for our uh, workforce planning, etc., uh, we use um, BI, uh, we use, uh, you know, Tableau uh, for basically data visualization and uh, for HR analytics. So these are some of the tools that we have been using in our organization, different departments. Uh, broadly, uh, there are a few more, but yeah, these are some some of the most used uh, tools that we have been using at the moment.